In this lesson, what we're going to address is the idea of forcing our opponent's arms out to where they go to positions where we can attack them with figure fours or arm bars. It's one thing to be on side control or on the mount and hope that the, your opponent gives you the opportunity, but it won't take very long before you're going to be wrestling with people that aren't going to give you any opp opportunities and you have to create those opportunities yourself. So we generally refer to ways of forcing these arms out to, uh, to into exposure. We call those, that idea, can openers. So I'm going to show you a couple here, just from side control and from north-south. One, I'm in side control. David's arm is in good position. It's tight to his body here and I can't force it out. I certainly don't want to back away and make space to force it out, otherwise he'll escape. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach under get my elbow under his elbow or inside his elbow and cup his shoulder, using my hand to cup his shoulder. From there, I'm gonna drop back and down quite low. So I'm going back at a 45 degree angle. I have to drop my right hip on the floor, otherwise he'll put me in the guard. And what I, what I want, my plan here is to get my right shoulder pressing down into his belly. I'm ignoring his arm. In fact, I want his arm to move around. So I'm ignoring his arm and I've dropped the front of my shoulder down into his belly. Now the next part of the movement, I'm gonna run that shoulder up his arm until it hits his wrist. And then use my legs to drive it out into space, come around here. So now I have the underhook here, where I can start to up and crush and attack with various moves. So I'm really just going from a position where David has his arms in correct position, to where I force his arm out and I have it in an underhook ready to attack. Points are, number one, I need to back off. I need to get below the level of his arm. If my shoulder gets below the level of his arm, then I can use, engage my legs and be driving that arm out into space with the power of my legs. So now it's my two legs versus his ability to keep his arm in, and that's basically versus his pec, okay? So, it's no good being on the arm. That's not helping me. So I have to get below the arm, completely off it. Cup his shoulder. Drop my right hip to the floor. Drop the front of my right shoulder to his chest. Now, I could just drive from where I am, but I'm gonna run my elbow, my shoulder, up until it hits the hand, because there's just way better leverage there than there is down here. So watch this, I move up to I'm on his hand. Now my legs are up, engaging my legs, driving that in, he can try to keep it in, it's not gonna work, I'm gonna take it right out, my head goes in between his head and his arm, and I have his arm out to where I can start to attack it. One last time, from the front. One, drop below his arm, my hip to the ground, cup his shoulder. Turn two, turn my right shoulder down into his chest. Three, run it up his arm till it hits his hand. Get my feet ready, now it's leg power, driving it out there and exposing it for the next attack. It's a very, very solid can opener, but there's a lot of detail um, in that move. It's a great way to get that hand out, if, especially if you've uh, already looked, taken our lesson on the uh, underhook up and crush series from side control. It dovetails into that beautifully. All right, let's look at now from north-south. So if David's around here, his arms are in. You'll notice this space in between David's arms. By being down on top of his arms, I'm not, I'm not helping my cause at all. In fact, it can be argued that my weight on top of David's arm is making it more difficult to get that thing out and expose it, because I'm part of the problem. So I'm gonna use my rib cage, and I'm gonna come right over here, and then use either side of my rib cage to start pulling away at these arms and pulling them out into space like this, in a succession of little kind of shimmy-like moves. So from here, I'm on top, I go over, now I'm going to work on this arm. So I start to paint it to the mat, and then I'll paint the other one out, and then paint this one out, and then the other one. It's almost like I'm, I'm painting his arm onto the floor with my body. Obviously I don't want to paint it all the way onto the floor and be out here because I've taken my weight too much on, the, on his body, but that's the idea. The pressure here is not downward pressure. The pressure is a pulling action like this, to spread his arms out to where they're exposed. On top, come past his arms. Left, right, left, 
right. And now I've been able to peel those arms out to where I can start to attack them, set up cross faces, and do all kinds of good moves. And it's one way that we actually like to set up cross face. We often set up cross face like that. We paint the arms out. Once we get the arm exposed and get our arm inside, our hand can come back. We turn the corner, we creep around past his head, put it under there, and we've got his arm just trapped up beautifully. That's a great can opener from the north-south position. We'll give you one more, what we call a walk-around can opener. David's hands are in good position, I'm in side control. Once again, I back down, I catch his shoulder. Basically, all I'm going to do now is walk around past his head to this position, but without raising my level up. I need to keep the level of my chest below the level of his forearm. So as I walk around, it'll peel his arm out to the point where I may be able to claim it, put it to the ground, walk back, finish with a bigger ball. It's a great setup for big ball. Once again, I stay low, walk around, walk around, walk around, walk around, even if I go all the way around. As long as I've got weight on it, he can't get my back very well. Take the arm down and then walk back. So there are a few great ways to open our opponent's arms out and expose them. So one was from side control. We backed off, got down, used our shoulder, the power of our legs, drove his arm out into space to set up our underhook. The other one was from front control for north-south. We moved back and forth, painting his arms away from his chest in a succession of small moves to expose them for cross faces, inside arm controls, forearm chokes, etc. And the last one there was a walk around from side control where we basically got below the level of his arm with, it, the level of his arm with our chest and we walked around past his head, sweeping his arm before us out into space to set it up for bigger fours.